Hey everybody, it's Steph with uh, Studio Web Killer Sites. So I just wanted to address a, a question that was recently, well, just put to me in one of the comments. What kind of computer would I use to uh, write code with? What, if I was going to be a, a developer, would I go Mac or Windows? Which one? Well, there's a couple of issues with regards to that. Off the top of my head, just getting straight to the point, if I had to choose today between a Mac or a Windows machine, I would lean Mac. This is a tough decision because the modern day Windows 10 computers are extremely, extremely cool now. I think in terms of feature sets and capabilities with regards to the typical a Mac, a Mac Pro Retina for instance, versus uh, the equivalent Dell or whatnot, or the uh, Samsung, etc. They're neck and neck, and each one has their pros and the cons. Like, for instance, I got a uh, Surface Pro 4 recently, and I bought it for a few reasons. This thing comes off. I bought it because my, Apple, uh, my Apple's uh, iPad 2 basically got bricked with one of the releases, one of the updates to iOS. It's just so slow. It's painful. So I decided I needed a new Windows machine for uh, recordings and because there are certain apps that I prefer on Windows, it's not available on Mac. So I said, oh, I'll get a Windows machine. It's good to have. And I have to tell you, in terms of tablets, the, the Surface Pro uh, 4s, in my opinion, are the best in the world. And a reason they're the best in the world is because it is two reasons. A, you got this this crazy cool kickstand, which goes in any... any um, you know any angle that you want and it's very solid you just put it down and also it's got really good um, you know facial recognition I just said look at it let's look at it hey you know it's like something it, it logs me in and um, it's a it's an interesting operating system because it's a hybrid operating system well right now it's set for desktop use and I could plug in two monitors into this thing two 4k displays and power it uh, so it's kind of cool. Um, so right now it's in Windows desktop mode, but if I just click here, I just pull it aside, I go to tablet mode. So now it works like a touchscreen device now, and it's extremely capable in that regard. Very, very fast, as you can see here. Um, I really like it a lot. I use it every day, whether it be as a tablet or as a daily driver. But I usually most, I, I usually, excuse me, I use it mostly in non-tablet mode, so let me just get it out of tablet mode. And what's interesting about this operating system, it's like, well, Windows 10, by the way, it's got the best windowing features out there. Much better than uh, Mac OS in terms of how you can, what you can do with your Windows. This is so much better. Now, if you go to tablet mode, all of a sudden it becomes uh, very flexible in terms of how you can use it. I'm just giving you a sample. So. What does this have to do with coding? I bought my Windows 10 machine because I wanted to have my hands in the Windows world because of the type of work I do and there was a particular app that only is on Windows that I wanted to use. So that's why I got it and I needed a tablet as well since my iPad was uh, was no longer uh, usable. What's also cool is about the Surface Pro, it's full Windows. It's not like iOS which is kind of hobbled. I can run all kinds of apps on there. I can run anything I want. Windows can it's Windows, so you can run anything you want. So it's very cool that way. Again, though, if I was going to be a professional coder, would I go to a Windows device or a Windows 10 device, like a Surface Pro or some some of the latest Samsungs or Dells, or would I go with Mac OS? They're neck and neck. They're neck and neck in terms of capabilities. If you want the power of the Retina in terms of all the features, you're gonna pay for it in the Windows world, that's for sure. Um, the thing about coding, though, is you don't really need a very powerful computer to begin with because you're just writing text most of the time. Yeah, you, it, it has an impact if you get into advanced stuff where you start using virtual machines, things like VirtualBox and stuff like that. We're having a lot of uh, RAM and uh, processor is uh, important. But, it, you know, it depends on the type of work you do. Of course, if you're doing C-sharp coding and .NET, of course, you're going to get a Windows machine, you know. Uh, of course, if you're doing iOS coding, uh, you're going to definitely have to get a Mac machine. So, you know, so I'm, I'm sort of torn, you know, I'm torn. Like I, I told you reasons why I got my Windows machine. Right now I'm recording this on a Mac Pro uh, Retina 2012. And it's still very good for many things. It's great. Um, I've been holding off because it's been doing everything I need. Uh, in terms of my work, not even, not even, you know, no trouble really, except for occasional issue here and there. 
but overall, it's, it's, I think it's, it's slightly superior in certain ways. Whereas with Mac, for instance, I find that the operating system, Mac OS X, for all its greatness, it's a great operating system, it's very stable and so on. It seems a little dated now when you compare it to Windows 10 in terms of the user experience, in terms of the flexibility. Like Windows 10 is both a touch OS and a, uh, a non-touch OS, a traditional PC. So you can switch between that so it responds more effectively to touch and so on in the Windows machine. Whereas Mac OS seems a little long in the tooth. It's great though, but it seems a little long in the tooth. I find the windowing is far superior on Windows in terms of snapping Windows into place and so on. Natively, Mac OS doesn't have that capability. It's not as nearly as good. It's very clunky and slow, really, in comparison. But there are third-party free apps that you can install give you a lot of power in that regard in that regard with Mac. I wonder why they just don't put that in. That being said, apparently Mac is finally coming out with a very interesting uh, new MacBook Pro. I've heard rumors about what it can do. It's got like on the keyboards, a little mini touch screen. People are thinking it's going to be there. I don't know. Uh, we'll see when it comes out within the next month or so or hopefully sooner. I plan to get one because I have a four-year-old Mac Pro, and eh, if, it, if it's significant in terms of its its uh, feature sets, in terms of its the, what it you know, in terms of the, the, the hardware and so forth, I'll probably get it. Um, that's it. So if you are uh, tight for money, you be and you want to get into coding, get a Windows 10 machine. They're much cheaper, and you'll be very happy with it. It's very cool. Um, but if you're really looking, if you got, you know, you got some extra money to spend, you're looking for that optimal coding experience, especially if you want to get into, uh, you know, the web space or maybe into, especially with all, of course, if you're doing iOS programming, you definitely need to get a Mac. So you have to think about what kind of coding you're going to do and uh, think about your budget and so on. But the great thing is whether you get a Mac computer or a Windows machine, you are going to have something that will probably last you at least three, four years, that's for sure. So that's pretty good value for your money relative to what we used to. We used to have to upgrade every two years in the past, as I mentioned in another video. That, uh, yeah, I guess that pretty much covers it. So choose what you need. One other thing, by the way, I, I want to point out, if you do get the top-of-the-line Max, you get the Max, they have a very high resale value so even though it's more expensive than windows you have to consider the fact that you could sell your mac two three years later four years later and get a pretty good chunk of money for instance my mac pro my macbook pro retina 15 inch 2012 yeah it cost me two and a half thousand for it expensive a little more than tax but but you know in, in canada at least and i imagine u.s and europe you get your taxes back because uh, your business, if it's business use, and you write it off if you have if you have a small business, and two, you'd be able to sell your Mac. I've I just mentioned to one or two people, and they were, they wanted to buy it. I could probably get a grand for it, eight eight hundred to a thousand. So that kind of offsets the cost of buying a new Mac, because if you take care of your Mac, you'd probably be able to sell it for for a pretty good chunk of change afterwards. Uh, not so with uh, mid-level and low-level Windows machines, um, except I found that I actually had a Samsung Series 9, which was a four-year-old ultra-thin laptop, beautiful. And I paid a good chunk of money for that too, like 2000 plus for it. And I sold it for 500 bucks, just a, a friendly price. But on Amazon, they're still selling for like $900. So I thought that... Uh, if I would have pushed, maybe I could have got six, seven hundred dollars for it. Not as easy though to sell a high-end Windows machine, that's for sure, versus a Mac, but still something to consider.